Okay, and let me get to, here we go, Sears. And Did you get Rich. a recording from last time? What's that? Did anybody get a recording from last time? Or did you not send it? I guess I didn't send it. You didn't okay. send it. Okay. <laughs> How many people look at them? I know Diane does. Uh, oh, hold on. I just lost you. Hold oh, on. Oh, no. <laughs> well, because I'm working on one screen. And so how many people actually look at them? I do. Not not regularly or the whole thing, but I do go back and look. Okay, good. That's that makes me feel good. All I right. like having the option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make a point of doing that. <clears throat> All right. So I am now going to share my screen. Oops. Sorry. Make that racket. Okay. So, who wants to go first? Oh, <laughs> oh Brooke, you know you do. <laughs> Just I'll relax then the rest of the time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, let's see. I am Catherine. So this must be Brooke. Um, yes. This is Brooke. Okay, excellent. Um, Okay, so Brooke, talk to us about as we just sort of look at the screen with these. I'll make them a little bit larger. But tell well, us about I think, what's been going on, and well, I think globally, first of all, it you know we didn't finish. I mean, it's been months now that I felt like I haven't picked up a camera, and I haven't because of all the packing and then the unpacking. We right. finally started living sort of normally. I could still show you the six boxes outside, and I still have all that right here. Um, that I finally picked up a big girl camera. I'd just been shooting iPhone and occasionally pulling my Leica out for some scene or something, but, and a couple of loon pictures. But <clears throat> so I felt sort of like I was going back to square one. I didn't have a rhythm and, and that I needed to go back and just shoot with sort of no intention but something other than just i mean the flowers are beautiful bonnie's done a fantastic job with the gardens but uh and i was fascinated by the bees but it um i just needed to find some rhythm is the only way i can describe it and i was fascinated by this asparagus that it was came out of a friend of ours garden because we go over and we cut yeah. our own asparagus from it and i've never seen one where the whole top was just curled up like this and I just thought it was really interesting. So I thought there's got to be some way to shoot this. And then the other uh, mannequin I have, I can only find the hand right now. I haven't unpacked the rest of her. And I thought the hand was sort of fun. And then I have Stormy's head. So I, um, I did, I don't know, several uh, shoots over the last couple of weeks with hand, asparagus, head. Most were failures, and, you know, no question about it. But it just, it helped me sort of move forward and get a feeling again of what I was doing or not doing. But um, so these sort of came out of that. And then it was a mixture of just the flowers in the garden that trying to look at them a little differently. Um, and that, you know, I just like the colors. It, it just sort of struck me. Um, and then that one I call the conversation. And it's um, it's two petals from Rosa Ragosa. So I was trying now before our last lesson, I would have said it was abstract, but I wouldn't use that word now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, <laughs> would you use it if I wasn't present? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't made that much of an impression on you. I still have work to do. <laughs> or, or I'd struggle with some other word. <laughs> Say formally known as abstract it is, you know, <laughs> looking at the world in a different way. I don't... <laughs> yeah. 
an interpretive understanding of rose petals. Yes, there you go or something. You go. And, and it sounds more astute than abstract. <laughs> Too cliche. Uh, okay. So, how do you feel about the the work that you've done here? Um, I'm not happy with it, really. It just, I feel it's sort of a bridge to somewhere. Something's missing. Something's not, something's forced. Something's not quite right there. Um, and then I'm really unhappy because the table that I used to get the reflections was our breakfast room table in Lewis had, even though I have green behind it outside the window from the forest, it's not coming through. It's coming through as a white background. Whereas <laughs> Lewis, I got all those wonderful colors. And I can't quite figure out how I got all those wonderful colors when I've got all this color outside the window. It's not translating on the back of the, you know, on, on the reflection part. So is I've got there, to Is there a lot of light on the the grain in the background? Um no, it's a dark forest. That might be the problem. Not enough light to bring it through. Not enough light to bring it, the colors out. Uh, but you could fix that. You could bring color in. You could um, you could bring some flowers in underneath. Um, you could just bring some colored paper in. Yeah, I think that's... I was thinking about whether getting colored paper and putting it under there to take care of that. Because that... But I sort of love the irregularity of the colors that were cast by... It was a combination of the flag and the bushes outside. Uh, or I could put a floodlight on the forest um, and see if that helps. Yeah, it might not be strong enough. No. Yeah. You know, the other multicolored is... cloth. Well, it just, it might be if it's far enough away so that it, it goes blurred. Right. Um, that's the problem. And then usually multicolored cloths. I could do overlays, but usually they... Um, they have too much of a pattern. So I don't know. I mean, I obviously have to play with it because I thought I'd get more color shooting with that that particular table at that point. And, and I was surprised that I didn't. So the, we, in the class that I was teaching that just finished, um, in the last class, we started talking about some of the um, limitations that we face and how often those limitations are... Um, avenues to new directions mm -hmm. and, um, and actually my thesis from graduate school a million years ago had to do with limitations you know mm. or you limit the, yourself the more you start to experience the possibilities within so I would take all of these issues as you know as opportunities challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. And, you know, you're getting some good ideas here about cloth and multicolored cloth and such. Um, but, you know, yeah, just keep playing. This is this is the time to play around with it and see uh, see what you can come up with um, with a, like an open mind. You don't want to get exactly what you had in Lewis. Yep. You're not going to do that. So look at what you can get. So, um, so yeah, I understand that. And I also understand when you haven't been shooting for a while. Now, it's, you know, for me, it's like my eyes get a little rusty. Mm -hmm. I can't see at the same level that I was before, mm -hmm. which is why I don't like to take too, too much time off from shooting. I don't want to lose the, uh, the acute vision that I've developed over you know, the last few months. Um, so I get that. I get feeling rusty. And, and I think the only way to get back into it is exactly what you're doing. Just do it. Yeah. And we're starting our um, round of house guests. We've had one house guest here for a week. And then That's a long time. No, she leaves tomorrow. It's been nine days. It's <laughs> it. And and it's Marty. She was actually in one of your um, the class you did at in Lewis for the camera club, and yeah. you know she's fine. Of all the house guests, she actually it's worked out okay. But it's time consuming. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And we basically are booked until early July. Then we have like a little respite of a week and a half. <laughs> it's just crazy, but yeah, I, I feel that like I'm gonna have to even if I have to get up before 
or everybody else gets up, I've got to grab the camera and just shoot. Yeah, absolutely. Can you hide in your barn? I could hide in the studio. That just has plexiglass, which I don't like as much as this glass. I may have to buy some glass, but I want to play with that and try to put some fabric on that. Um, and it's very, but it's very dark up there. But I have some lighting I brought, so we'll see. But I can go up to the studio because otherwise everybody's right there in the middle of everything because the table's yeah. in the kitchen. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the the barn is the studio. No, it's a, there's a studio. There's a little studio that's about mm, ten by twelve. Oh, and that's great. Prior owner used as his gym, and then there is the barn. But the barn loft, as well as the garage loft, because I've got one of the mannequins up in the garage loft, which is which is great. But um, it gets very hot up there because neither have an airflow. Yeah. Or much of one when it gets warm. It was really warm about a week ago. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, the first thought, what if you put um, plants around the table? so that they reflected. Oh, the that's a good idea. That's a good idea. We have some I could do that with. Or some of these. Or underneath it even, that would work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've got terrific colors in here and and in here. Mm -hmm. And if you- Yeah, those two were outside. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, of. Uh, of the images that you've got up here, this this one is um, the one where I I felt um, you had a connection with it, and so much of it is the sort of intimate way that you've put things in the frame, where it's come in and you've got a nice square, a tight frame, and fitting this form into it in a really nice way. So you do create a sense of intimacy. And you've got the light coming in back here, which gives a nice sense of space. So, yeah, and um, and the same thing here. Uh, you've you've got it coming in and and creating this, you know, tight circle here. Um, and it again, it has this sort of intimate feeling because the forms coming around here, the out focus forms. And then coming around here where we get some really nice detail. Um, are you hand holding at this? Yeah, yeah, I've always hand held. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, but I'd love to see a little bit more depth. More of sharpness. Yeah, yeah, just a, a little bit, maybe. You know, it's so hard when you have such a thin slice of focus. Well, yeah, I and I think I tried to get it up around an F8 or F7 as opposed to just the F4 um because the 200 uh, millimeter macro yeah yeah so um well even even with that um the out of focus is doing some interesting things I, you know i think this is very mm -hmm. cool so um i think it would be playing with where where the focus is you know this is right now screaming from to me to be in focus mm -hmm. where we've got the focus off here and off here and it's but they're both kind of framing this so it you know the the, the um, guidance that you're giving us with the with the focus doesn't make sense to me well that was one thing I was um, trying to be aware of and um, mm -hmm. it's hard to do because I'm not changing the focus it's me moving back and forth right and, right um <clears throat> But I, I began to realize the closest thing to me should be the thing in focus, because otherwise it just throws it off. It blocks your eye. It stops you from going into the picture. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But but also I I also believe that there aren't absolutes. And well, yeah. So, but that's a, a general rule of thumb. Yes, uh, because the out of focus does prevent us from getting into the image. Um, this looks like a person's eye. Yeah, that's why I left it there. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, yeah. I would probably tone it down just a little bit so that right now this is, I think, the brightest thing. Mm -hmm. in the I image. brightened it, so I guess I shouldn't have brightened it. Yeah, I would I would tone it down. Oh, damn. Yeah, because this, this is kind of what you want us to look at, not so much this. 
Okay. And so this is, um, are these uh, on your table? And then we're yes, getting the, they were on the table. So we're getting the, the double sides of the glass yeah. surface and then the backside of the glass. So depending upon the thickness of the glass, this could be larger or smaller. Um, and also your camera angle as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think the tonality in here is um, almost gorgeous. Almost. It's a tiny bit flat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as I'm looking at it, um, I want to see just a little bit more range of tones in here. Not much, but just you know, uh, just a little bit more. And even the same in here, it's, we, we don't have much range in the, in the values here. If this was black and white, it would be all mid-tone grays. Yeah. Uh, and um, to give it a little pizzazz, I would give it a little contrast. And okay. how would you do that? Well, let's in see. curves? That's, oops. Let's see how I would do that. <laughs> Photoshop works so fast. Did you see how fast that came up? <laughs> I love this computer. Um, let's see, how would I do that? Okay. Of course, everything is in a different place now. No, we don't see Photoshop. Oh, you don't? You don't? No, we're still seeing your bridge. You Aww. have to go out of. Uh... Oh, dang it. I, I thought I was impressing you with how fast my computer was. And... Okay. Then I guess I'll have to. Well, well, so now. There you... it goes. There we go. Okay. Okay. And then here we go. And, um, you know, instead of um, using uh, curves, uh, I like to look at so you can see what I'm doing now over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so I, I like to go into levels and you can see everything is really, all the tones are bunched up together. And th if I bring this over, it brings uh, white into it. So this is adding more contrast and you can see the contrast really coming up in, in this one mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And for this one, we probably need more darks to give it a little bit more contrast and you can see how we've sh we've spread out the tones from here to here um so that's that's how i would play with it i would start working these going back and forth and at some point you're going to have to work on them individually mm -hmm. uh this so let's just look at this one here for a moment and <clears throat> Where did my properties go? Okay. So we're just looking at the one on the left and increasing the lights and increasing the darks. And it gives us so much more here to look at. And actually the same here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks much better. Yeah. So this is how we started. And this is where we came to. Now, one thing I don't like is how this all brightened up. Mm -hmm. right here in the middle that really is taking away from the conversation that's going on here mm -hmm. so i would uh i'd come back in here with a big brush so are are you working with um um photoshop and and a lot of these no books? i was doing a lightroom classic but but i was using i actually this time did use the brush a lot and did dodging and burning in all sorts of places on the photos Good, good. In classic or in Photoshop? Brooke? Classic. Classic, yeah. Okay, so that's way too much here. But I can tone it down here. But it tones down the whole thing. Anyway, you get an idea of what I want to do. I would block this off and come in and bring the, the tonality back in this rather than um, rather yeah, than I'd like clone that. out those little upper corners too to not have 
right up absolutely there. good catch good catch yep okay i love what that contrasted to the lilac yeah, yeah. it's amazing yeah. it's beautiful isn't it you could go even further with it I, I always like to go as far as you can and then back up so i think to go back to bridge i have to stop sharing they just do close well, it, I don't know. <clears throat> it's a pain if that's how I have to do it, isn't it? Yep. But that's okay. We can survive. <laughs> okay. Um, this is, uh, for me, too bright mm -hmm. and too far gone from, too out of touch from what it is. Um. The colors actually kind of hurt my eyes. I look hmm. at this ball. It might be my screen. I might have my screen too. No, it's just I've seen nothing but rain for a week. <laughs> so, oh, oh, okay. So the whole week. So it was like looking really good to me. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. So too, um, too out of touch. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, tell enough of what it is. Yeah, you really can't. It could be anything you know it could be and the colors kind of look like um candy or mm -hmm. cartoon ish you know so it leads me down that road uh, but i like the tones that you're getting in um, some of these the tonality is is really interesting well those i played with i, I desaturated oh nice and because the green was just too strong and um you know the mannequins have a fake that fake you know um yeah flesh part. and so i desaturated and then played with it a little with the um temperature to make it a little warmer yeah okay yeah i and i think that works really well um one thing you'll have to really pay attention to is how bright the background is mm -hmm. um and you know, that's something that you can address as you are um, bringing color into the situation. Yeah. It, it reminds me a little bit of Catherine when you were doing the flowers on the light box. Yeah, there was a lot of light box feel to it, which I didn't yes. particularly like. And and it, uh, you know, I was frustrated because I couldn't get the color in there I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, I mean, whereas that... the top one was the same area but somehow that didn't come through with the light box feel the top one with the fingers on the asparagus the third one that one over there you go oh it's um your camera angle you've come down closer to the surface of okay. the table which elongates or spreads out the reflection so mm -hmm. so um like here there's really no reflection um what did I do? Oh, yeah. So he, here there's really no reflection because you're coming down, looking down on it more. But here your your camera is very close to the surface and that's giving this. And we've got this lovely little line here, which is water. Is water? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's very cool. So that's, that's a way of dealing with it. Mm. It's coming down low so you're not shooting into the light but picking up more of the reflection what would you think of uh, rotating that so it's going up and down hmm. all right oh i tried that which you oh you mean the uh the photo itself yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that's kind of spooky yeah it does like hmm. little pez dispensers <laughs> Well, these things look like misshapen faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in this way, I would take this down and this down and maybe brighten these a little bit. Um, it's interesting. It changes it drastically. Yeah, I do see the faces. That's cute. Mm -hmm. cute but it's interesting. Cute, cute. We don't allow that word here. No, I know. That's banned like out. abstract. Slipped. Yeah. This is much more intriguing. Yes. In <laughs> terms of the relationship, <laughs> the relationships of the fingers and the stalks and uh, the relationship of the two stalks together. 
I feel like this direction, my eye, um, it sees more, it focuses more on uh, two stalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And you don't immediately know what it is. Right. You say, woo. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Let's get it back. Fingers are more obvious so, as well. Well, I, I don't know. The fingers seem, I, I get the sense of touch here. Mm -hmm. which I don't necessarily in the other one. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. I do get the sense of touch here. Mm -hmm. I do. Prop it down a little bit from the top. Yeah, I think you're right. I probably would. Well, these days, if it was mine, I'd probably prop it here, but that's where I am right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I would certainly darken so that this is where you're telling us to look tonally. I think that's really intriguing. Yeah, it's it's I think it's more um it's less obvious what it is, but we mm -hmm. still can figure it out, but there is certainly an engagement with it. I think more of an engagement this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Nice um suggestion, Diane. Mm -hmm. Um this one looks too much of what it is to me. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't gone far enough. Uh, the middle section I liked. It reminded me of the Easter eggs, you know, where you'd go inside the Easter egg and there'd be a little village in there. Mm. But, I never got that. I never got a village. Oh, mm, really? Scene or something? In the yeah, eggs? April. Aww. but So I really cropped in on this flower, but not enough. I mean, the white's too much on the left, but I love that center section. Yeah. Sort of the depth of it. Yeah. How about cropping that in and just having that? <laughs> I tried. I mean, I cropped it in a substantial amount, but then you lose some of the, um, you can almost get it, but it, it cut it off so much, it gave no room to breathe. Yeah. And you're also, it's degrading. It's degrading, yeah. It's a substantial crop on that one. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I would try with this would be, um, desaturating it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and because right now this is what's screaming at us yep. up here and um, I think if you desaturate some you could bring out and play with the contrast you could bring out more tonality in here okay well Brooke it's good to see you getting back into it yeah it felt good to get back into it Good. And you got some good suggestions from everybody. Yep. Thank you. Any um any questions? No, no. All right. Here we go. Sears. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Diane's next. <laughs> okay, so Diane, explain to the class what's going on here. Well, I'm kind of on this. Yeah, which I haven't exactly decided if I like it. Um, um, of trying to sort of both merge faces and then take apart faces. And I, I did some of this in Connie's illusions class, which was really good, by the way. Um, and so what I did is uh, for the the first three are, are multiple faces, which I was kind of playing with. Um, the following ones are the first one is the original, and then the second is is how is how I submitted it to the illusions class. And so then I went back um, and changed them, changed it to see if I could make it effective. Um, and I do a lot of experimenting with these. I take things in and out. I change shapes. I change the um, how the black comes through. Um, I don't I don't have as good a sense of 
whether I've got it where, you know, whether I've got to the point of where I should stop or if there's more I should do to make it stronger. Um, do you literally cut photo uh, photographs up? No. No. no it was all in Photoshop. Hmm. So I, I cut up the photograph in Photoshop and then, um, which is more time consuming than tearing photographs. <laughs> yeah, it's more what? Oh. So, time consuming. Yeah, right. much more time consuming than just tearing something. Right, else. right. Um, but when I tear, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. Whereas in Photoshop, I could I can change it. I change their angle. I change how much of the piece shows. And so I'll start out with um like if you look at the one that's one, two, three, four, number five, you can see that the, the next one. Oh. There's no the next one. one. There's all these blank spaces. Um so in Photoshop I could um try having in you know larger larger places I can uh, cut it in half I can um, take it out totally uh, so Photoshop gives me a, but I don't exactly know what I'm doing oh and then I should tell you the last two are weird I just actually wanted to show them to Connie but you I could see them too um, is I took this class with Brenton Hamilton who is a who teaches history of photography and he was doing a two class session on collages, the history of collage. And oh, I just how fun. Since yeah, since I like collages so much, it's about time I learned a bit about the history. And I learned more from him than the books. I, I don't know. And he's an amazing teacher. Hmm. But what we didn't know about the classes, then you had to do something at, uh, based on what what he talked yeah. about. So the class was on collage and assemblage, which I've done lots of collages. I've never done an assemblage. I didn't even know what it was. Um, anyhow, so the last two images are what I ended up with in that class, which I thought just might be fun to show you. What is an assemblage? An assemblage is a three-dimensional collage. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in one way or another. Um, it's often done, if you, if you want to look at the last thing, I think, Connie, the last one on here. Oh, OK. Bottom <clears throat> Uh, so you put something in a box and then you put in bits of stuff. You could put anything in there. I mean, you could put things you find on the street. You could put paper, you fold paper. Um, so, and um, he talked about how the history of collage and assemblage, a lot of it was very, um, was very much related to the culture of the time. And so people who are doing this are, um, are really bring to their art um, cultural concerns or issues or observations or whatever. Um, so I decided to do this about abortion. Um, and what's interesting about this is these two were the first, I haven't done anything political with my work um so that's that's a collage of photographs that i've taken at various marches where i've been there taking pictures huh. yeah. that's this cool is i really like that one diane yep all um, right definitely yes yeah. yes i think it's wonderful mm -hmm. yeah so love the signs mm. yeah i've been wanting to do something with signs but signs are hard because it can just look like sign, 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 sign. It, it can be really boring. Um, so I've never really done anything. I mean, I've taken pictures of people with signs, um, but I've never put together something like this. So this was kind of fun to try to make it not just one sign, that was, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, the way that you put the signs in keeps it flowing and keeps yes. it keeps it interesting, mm -hmm. keeps it so yeah, it's not it's static, static, it's dynamic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, there's uh, there's nine segments, but there's a lot of overlap among the segments. Right, right. right. Well, that provides the continuity. 
That's okay. yeah, the wonderful idea. And the signs are so great. <laughs> they are. They're really good signs. So it was fun. So I thought I'd just share that. Thank you. Anyway. So um, this one is one you showed in class. Right. And, and this is how I changed it. And this is how you've changed it. Hmm. I, 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 dynamic. It's much more dynamic. And one thing I really like is how this is sort of animating an mm -hmm. open mouth, you know, as if there's sound coming out of here. Mm. And the use of the um, the negative space, the black, is, mm. is really working with the shapes. Here, it's, um, it's very predictable. And it's lovely what's happening to the eyes here, but this has such a strength to it. Um, one thing is the way that you've, you've cropped in, um, but also the way that you've really animated her, both her eyes and, and the mouth. I think it's really terrific. Well, and the eyes being, being <laughs> off center the way they are in that one, make it look almost like I'm coming apart. Whereas the other one being more regular and the eyes being horizontal and more uniform, you don't have that same sense of cracking up. Right, right. This really is about cracking up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to these two in a second. <clears throat> but I want to do the same thing here. Let's look at these two. So this is... Um, what you started with, and then this is how you pushed it. Mm -hmm. So having this little split here, in one way, it it kind of looks, presents like a nose, or it mm -hmm. works into the nose that's here. The, the shape is kind of implying the nose. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And the um, the eyes here look like cat eyes, uh, which yeah. I didn't get so much here, but I guess because they're much more dynamic here. And the same thing with the mouth here that was happening with the other one, you know, it's it's not open, it's not saying anything, but there's there's um, there's a gesture in there. It's like the organization of this is is containing it. And then sort of breaking things apart here is um, the way that you're breaking them apart is starting to animate. Do you, do you um, feel that way, Diane? I like this. The, I like the modifications that I've made to all of them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in all of them, um, the first ones I would put in guides so that I put a sort of, oh, okay. how to break up the face. Yeah. Change it. I got rid of the guides. But just use my eyes. Much better. Much, much stronger. Who's here? I can tell. That's great. <laughs> and so these, not change that much, but enough of a change to, to really um, give a different sense to the image. Um, the way the mouth is crooked here. Uh, it is much more effective here than it is here. So why is it? Why is this more effective than this? What is what is it about? More of an angle. More of an angle on the left. On, on, the, on the left. Uh, on the the right hand one, but on the yeah. So more of an angle here. Yeah. Yeah. It's also just a bit larger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what's what about it? the eyes are more angled or cropped in more, so it brings you into it more. Right. Right. And the difference of having this touch versus having this distance. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, it it gives a continuity to it, but we also we have a triangle shape here. We have a closed triangle where we have an implied triangle here. And uh, 
I think these shapes that, you know, they come into these sharp points are, are adding a real um, diagonal, um, sharp, edgy quality to the images. It almost adds attention. Attention, yeah, absolutely. So that is totally based on Connie's feedback um, hmm. because I realized in the first set I was paying um, a lot of attention to the quote subject, but not to the negative space at all. Hmm. Um, and so after Connie pointed that out, I tried to, I thought that was a really important feedback. So I tried just to pay more attention to, to the negative space in these. Yeah. Yeah. And it uh, and you did a good job with it. Okay. So the one on the right is the same, the originals on the left, and then the black and white is the is where you took it. I I would look at something kind of in between this. Mm -hmm. Um it has kind of a dull quality here. Mm -hmm. Um because there's not a lot of contrast, but the the color here gives you a little more contrast. Um, this, the whole image here needs more contrast. I suspect this one does too. Um, but if I would take try taking this in color and then just desaturating it a little bit. First thing I would do would be to add some contrast to it. Okay. Let's just see what happens. Okay, you guys didn't see how quickly that came up, but it <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we don't see it. I <laughs> know. Um, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Stop share. Share. I don't know why that happened like that. Now, I think if you just I don't know the way I've been learning mine. If you just put the window take the yellow dot and put it down. You'll see Photoshop in back of the one window. It, Photoshop will be in back. Oh, really? I know. I've been struggling with exactly the same issue, Con. I found that <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to go bam, 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 bam between Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah. But, okay. but here the issue is with uh, Zoom. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, you just have to go out as soon as... As long as you change the screen. So just adding a little bit of contrast, you can see gives it gives it some pizzazz. Uh, yeah. And I'm going out to bridge and I'm bringing another one in, which you'll see in a second. This one I would um, desaturate. And I would add contrast. I probably would add the contrast first. Hmm. And then I would desaturate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's so, just enough color. Just enough, yeah. So you get that energy. Yeah, maybe down to there. All right, zoom. Oh, wait a minute, not that. Stop share. Start share. I don't see a way around that. Oh, well. Okay. Um, so now we're at bridge, right? No. Hey, you're in, we see Photoshop. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. There we now are. We're bridge. Okay. So, um, Oh, we didn't talk about these. And I thought you did such a good job of bringing mm -hmm. I love that one. Together. Yeah, this is wonderful. It really is. I always have to make a comment, right? Um, I would darken this just a little bit. So it's not quite as bright as it is. Uh, but having this light come down like this is effective. I just wouldn't have it quite this much. 
um, this eye is so important in this image. Mm. Uh, I might even brighten this eye just a little bit. And then I would, I, I, this is fine. I would just take this down a little bit more. But I think you did such a great job of, of blending these together. Yeah, it's impressive. It's really cool. impressive. Really impressive. Uh-huh. That's a great job. <clears throat> Oops, wait a minute. Um, and this is interesting because of the way that you've sort of stretched the face here. Uh, and, and it looks like the mouth is open and that there's a tongue here, which is a very, str it, I don't know any dolls that have tongues involved. <laughs> is this just an illusion? Yeah, yeah, it's just the way her mouth is. Oh, it's great, it's great. Yeah, and you know, the, the expression over here to the expression over here is, it's, Those are two different dolls, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the 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 two expressions are, um, really pushing it in an interesting way. I'd get rid of the highlights here, but you're uh, you've really become an expert at blending things. Okay. My oh, hat's yeah, off to you. Wow. Um, do you have any, any questions, Diane? Oh, no, your feedback was uh, helpful. Good. Interesting explorations. It mm -hmm. is, isn't it? You know, what they all have in common is um, finding different ways of expressing gestures or, or em emotions, you know, in, instead of... Mm -hmm you know, doing a frowny face, you know, coming in and, and finding ways to express those feelings um, that have a, a resonating quality to them. Well, and all by deconstructing and reconstructing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes back to that saying I've said many times to you by um, Nietzsche. Um, you must have chaos in your heart to give birth to a dancing star. So you take the face apart and you've got chaos and then you put it back together. And when it works, you've got a dancing star. It's lovely. Yeah, really is lovely. Okay, Catherine, thanks for volunteering here. <laughs> Oops, let's do, let's stay there. Okay, so C Catherine, talk to us about where you are. What well, I keep wanting to find something else. But the only things I want to take pictures of are uh, flowers. I did take a picture of a fisherman the other night, just on principle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and how was uh, that? I don't see it, him up here. It was boring. <laughs> Um, but uh, when one takes pictures of flowers, one takes pictures of bugs. Uh, and so that was kind of fun to, uh, in post-processing to discover several bugs. The, the title of that image is The Trek. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, um... Do you feel, what What makes you feel like you want to move on from the flowers? Well, um, it's, it's not that I'm bored. It's just kind of, I, I feel that I should. <laughs> ah, okay. Have I exhausted this? I don't know. That's a good bug. Yeah, that was a great bug. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, I I felt that way early on in my in my project, and throughout the years, I felt like, is there anything else for me to do? Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, I keep coming coming back to it. Um, well, the thing about flowers is that it's so um, convenient. You know, you don't have to work with a model for portraits. Uh, and given, you know, I don't have as much in the way of time constraints as I used to, but still somewhat, and uh, space is limited. So it works, and why not? Are there other reasons why it works? I mean, those are practical things, and, and that's real. Well, I love flowers. I love exploring them. Okay. And I love the sensuality. I love the colors. I love the... Um, I just love flowers and always have. Yeah. Um, so you're you're drawn to them. It works for you on a number of levels. Um, I say keep going. You know, if you sure. tried to go photograph a sailor and it was boring... You come back to the flowers and it's exciting. I mean, that's pretty clear <laughs> direction. <laughs> and you um, you are moving forward with, um, with these. Um, I think this is really beautiful. Um, there's such a delicate quality to it. Um, and when you when you get into these these soft tones, this is this is where those mid-tones aren't flat, but soft and delicate. Um, and what makes it that is you've got the highlights here and you've got the darkness here. So you've got the full tonal range, which really helps to define this soft mid-gray as, um, as a delicate rather than just mealy gray. Should I take the bug out of the top left? It's not clearly a bug. I don't yeah. even see one. Right here. There it is. Oh, no, you can't tell what it is. The only thing is this is balanced here and that that's, there's, there's a nice kind of association with this right in the center of that. So okay. I, I don't think I would. Well, to me, the bug that it doesn't see is a bug. It looks like the bottom of a flower on the top left. Not in the flower, but the if you're talking about that little black spot in the top left, it looked mm -hmm. almost like some spot on the flower or the bottom of the flower. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, I okay, so I would take it out. I would leave the rock or whatever. Or oh, know. but just clone it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's an idea. Mm -hmm. Or clone it down, you know, take the clone stamp at 20% and clone over it a little bit. So it's not as dominant. It's not as dominant, but you know, it has a, a mm -hmm. conversation from here to here. And I think that black dot is kind of adding to the conversation a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so of, of these uh, 12 images up here, Catherine, what are the ones that you are most drawn to? Um, the one, I like the upper right, uh, that and the one next to it. I, I like the gesture on the one next to it the the top yeah um uh, and the tones are softer in that one uh, i think the highlights need to come down in the one on the right uh the one on the left is a little more um dynamic yeah that in being off center there. My assignment was to work with edges. Ah, I forgot that. Okay. <laughs> so you can see in the bottom left, uh, I intentionally did that crop for the assignment. Uh, uh, 
Okay, okay. So we're looking at these two. Let's see if we can keep them on the same line. Okay, so we're looking at these two here. Mm -hmm. And you cropped in here mm -hmm. to bring us here. Okay, so I what- it's more dynamic. Uh-huh. What makes it more dynamic? Uh, the relationship with the edge. Uh -huh. The fact that it's not a uh, discreet. Uh... Hold on just a second, please. Zoe, out, 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 out. What is Zoe? Zoe is a uh, Bijou. Ah, okay. An <laughs> overweight Bijou. Okay. Uh, who is not supposed to be in here. Uh, what was I saying? It's, uh, it's, it expands the, that crop expands the image to the outside. The one on the right is more contained. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. Um, one thing this crop does is make these lovely little things here um, more a, a part of the image. Mm -hmm. um, I would take down the highlights a little bit. Um, they're just a little bit too too far from the next tonalities. Mm -hmm. so it makes them pop out. Um, when I first looked at this, I thought... I probably would have cropped like this. Hmm. And because this is kind of wanting to go off like that. Mm -hmm. um, but when I saw the, how involved these little things became, um, I understood why he did that. But I do want to just, and though this is a pain here, let me, wait, <laughs> did that come up? Okay, there we are. Now, stop share, start share. Okay, so here we are. You, you guys see it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. hmm, before I do anything, okay. Oh, shit, I got the wrong background. Hold on. Okay. So I just added a little space here for this mm -hmm. for this guy. It's it's a totally different feel yeah. to it than the other one. Um and what this one does is it really emphasizes this, mm -hmm. which I think is a really interesting shape. The other one, the other crop that you had emphasizes these little things. So it's not, you know, one is better or worse than the other. It's just um, um, <clears throat> an option. It's an option, right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so talk to me about your thinking about edges as we're going through, especially some of these up here. What is your thinking about edges here? Well, uh, on the top right, I brought the crop in uh, to hit the edge of the petal so that mm. on, the, on the left, and just gave a little bit of space on the pedal on the right uh, so that you could get that curve. Right. Um, yeah, and this curve along with these right. curves. Right, to really emphasize cool. that kind of roundedness. Yes. Um, 
Good. I would take these little highlights down. Mm -hmm. Again, I would do that trick with um, clone stamp. Right. Like 2% or so. Okay. And um, the center ones didn't. Uh... I mean, yes. this, this, I see the relationship here. Uh -huh. That's interesting. So what if we just, you know, crop more here, even crop a, a couple of these off to okay. form more of a relationship? Uh-huh. Can you envision it? Yes, I can, uh, especially since I'm going to block it off. Yeah, yeah. Just do it with your, do it like with a piece of paper or something. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, and it, and it really does show um, that relationship stronger. Yeah. Now I think the tones in here are really gorgeous. We got a good view of your finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I thought this one was quirky. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what it just is itself. It just is itself. Agreed. <clears throat> um, this one, these colors seem a little strange. I would desaturate them down to, um, you know, when you get into this kind of loveliness in here. Mm -hmm. I would, I would take this more into this song mm -hmm. here. You've got. You know, the, the concentration of these colors here is really overwhelming the image. Mm -hmm. And I would darken, darken mm. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we did talk about this one. Did we talk about this one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right, right, the bug, the bug, the bug. Uh, Okay. I would like to see you push push the edges more. Uh, okay. So this um, is such a dynamic form and the way that you have this cropped and the working with the edges is just giving that sort of cradling, protecting feeling and right. it. And it works really well. Um, that was exactly the feel I got of it, cradling, protective. Right, right. Um, if you take this down uh, just a little bit, mm. it'll, it'll make it'll enhance that feeling. It will, mm. it will give it a little bit more of a cradling feeling. Um, but I'd like to see you push that. Push the edges. Push it, the edges. Um, in the way that you interpret the images. And you can show us before and after if you if you would like to. Okay. Um, so think of the way that you are interpreting the images and how can you push um, push that feeling. Like this one, is kind of crazy, kind of zany. Mm -hmm. What else can you do to make it have that feeling? Of being quirky and zany? Yeah, I don't have the answer. I think it's at the time of shooting, you know, ah. working something in, you know, making a connection with the background in some way, or I don't know, but what is there in this that you can, how can you push this? Hmm. So that's your assignment. And I love that you told me what your assignment was, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was very nice. I just wanted to mention that I think the uh, the peach colored, the two peach colored ones, mm -hmm. may have a real vintage look. Mm -hmm. And I was curious how if you did anything special to make that, or is it just the color that you use, the background, or does anybody else see that? 
Well, yeah, it actually remind there. I I have a vague recollection of something looking like that on canvas, a painting, in right. a. When I was a little kid in our apartment. Yeah, yeah, that kind of a feel. Yeah, yeah. the fifties deco yeah. decor or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this could be a print on a on a, a Chinese peony. print, a Chinese, Chinese peony, or nineteen fifty yeah. flowers and garden magazine. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Maybe desaturated just a little bit. I would, I would desaturate yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And. Pay attention to what happens in here when you do that. Mm. I, I sort of had the feeling like it needed just a sh like a half inch, quarter inch more on the left of canvas because it's not really cut off, but it's it's so close to the edge. Either either it's close to the edge and you give a little more canvas, or you crop it in so that it's just the edge is being used. But I would I would crop. You cry, yeah, if, you can if crop you it. here. You're going to bring more attention to all of this. Yep. Mm, okay. That'd be one or the other, but not that in between. Right. That makes if, good if, sense. If you give it more space here, it's going to become more static and you'll yes. have mm -hmm. less interaction here. So I think the idea of cropping in is a really good one. How about cropping up a little bit as well? You know, I, I think it's a, I think it's um an interesting thought. I wish I could just do it here. I might have to do a little research into this, what's going on. Um, yeah, I think uh, cropping it a little bit from the bottom and a little bit from this side. You don't want to crop in too much because this is part right. of this. Yeah, right, right. And if you crop that off, the problem is this is going this way and this is going this way. If it's just going this way, I don't know if it would be as um, dynamic, dynamic. Yeah. relationship there, but those are the things that I would just play with. Mm -hmm. So how did you get the color on the background? How did I get the what? Color of the background. I don't know. <laughs> I really think this is lovely. But this was taken inside, not out yes. in the... Yeah. Yes, definitely. And how did you light it? Um, I think it was probably a combination of natural light and uh, artificial. Okay. So you. you have questions for us? Oh, but go down to the bottom. The second one on the bottom row. This one? This one. Yeah. Um, Any thoughts about that? It reminds me of um, flower that um, Imogene Cunningham did. Right. Called the Magnolia. Right. And I frankly can't get away from that. So that's that's sort of where I get hung up with it. It's not different enough that it takes me someplace else. I love the colors in it. The colors are beautiful, but that's not enough. Okay. Right, because hers was black and white. Right. And... Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of it is me because as a very young photographer, um, I I found another female photographer and just hung on to her. Imogene was, and I got to meet her once, which was really wonderful. Oh, whoa. Yeah, really nice. Um, so I think it's me. I think I get hung up on, on that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Um, ah, Suzanne, how was your surgery? Well, I can explain. <laughs> yes. Um, I think this grouping of photos is more of a uh, a, a, a reaction on how was my surgery because <laughs> I had a lot of. Um, different vision coping with different vision and I still have different vision because I only have one eye done and uh 
uh, colors and blurriness and a lot of time when I couldn't shoot. And and, um, and then I went to New York uh, in all the smoke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that changed things too. Um, and I saw a wonderful exhibit up there uh, of Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, yeah. So I came home all inspired to make my my photos more painterly, which has always been an objective of mine. So yeah. the surgery, uh, I think went well. Uh, I am having still a little bit of problems with brightness, yeah. particularly in the beginning. I think the first picture is more a reflection of how my vision was when I first had my cataract removed because all the colors were real poppy. Yes. Something I hadn't seen, you know, you know, in, in, in Lightroom, when you go into your, your white balance and you go from warm to tungsten, yeah, <laughs> it's like this eye is warm and this eye is tungsten, you know. <laughs> but actually, when I shot this picture, that was really the color that actually came out. And I thought, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's just my vision <laughs> at the time. But I would say it's all in all successful. I have my other one done this Wednesday and I'm anxious to do that so that they are they it are even out. Yeah. Uh, but I love the. Uh, if I just shut this eye, you know, and I could walk around like this, it, you know, yeah. So you're going to have no problem at all. The procedure was very, very smooth. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not half as anxious this time as I was the first time. And there is a bit of recovery and that, you know, you can't bend down, you can't pick up a jug more than five pounds or something like that. But, but, you know, you have Patricia with you and, you know, right. yeah, you, you won't have any problems. I'm so looking forward to it. I yes, but you're going to be amazed. I did not oh. realize how bad, if I close my good eye now, I did not realize how bad uh, my vision had become. So I'm not sure this is a good reflection of what it's going to be, but it's a reflection of the different things, different stages I was going through. Yeah. Well, I <clears throat> the, the blurriness in here and the way it's coming around is is really haunting. Uh, did you try desaturating just a little? I bit? did, and I, for some reason, I abandoned that. I did not like it desaturated. I realize it's really intense color. Um, the pond itself was really intense. That green was very intense. Um, so and, maybe it just this this is it. You know, I yeah, it might be. It's it's maybe not my favorite, but it's for the most representative of what I was seeing at, in the early stages. Well, I like how the light is bleeding through and coming out like that. Yeah, thank you. You know, I continue to to try and work with intentional camera movement. And I think my problem, not a problem, but I realized that the technique is very evident. You know, when you use that, it's it's very evident. And in order to make them compelling is kind of my, you know, what makes that, what makes the technique so that people aren't looking at the technique, but that you understand what I'm trying mm -hmm. to yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah. What makes it work? Yes. What makes it work in some cases and in some cases it just doesn't, you know? So the, how did you do this? Because it seems like two very different movements. Does it? No, uh, I was using probably, I would say in this photograph, I tend to go forward and back. Okay. Okay. Uh, or a sweep. So I was probably doing a sweep, as you can tell from the background. Right. Uh, the culvert in front was much closer, and I was shooting across that. So it's I I get what's happening though, because this is a waterfall, right? Yes. So, so the it, water it, is falling down, and you're going this way. Right. So it's creating a crosshatch. Right. Effect, mm. Which I think is really interesting. Yeah, I think this it, is the favorite one that I did. Especially with the sort of exaggerated horizontal quality here. I would tone this down. A little yeah. too bright. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that problem. I was shooting some white on white photographs and I said to Catherine and Brooke, after I got done, I said, they're all blown out because everything is so <laughs> bright to me right now. It's just, right. you know. Right. Uh -oh. Um, this one is um, too confusing. I thought you'd say that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are qualities about it that I think are really cool. Mm. Um, 
And so this right here, I think mm -hmm. could be this right here. There is a kind of magical, mystical quality. How about just propping into that. there? Um, well, I think bringing us in would be interesting. I don't know if you could do it, but, you know, sort of bringing from dark to a little bit lighter and then uh -huh. this really um, defined shape here and the same thing here. So you're tonally bringing us into mm -hmm. this. And it's the same um, by darkening the left, because if you just crop, you're going to be so narrow. But if you darken that light spot on the left, will it bring your eye in? Yes. I think if you darken this and, uh -huh. this, and this, it will and this, it will bring you in this. This will be enough here to sort of anchor you in. Uh -huh. uh, and I would darken here to bring you in. Um, I would make sure this reads not as flat, but as round, which would be making this edge black, maybe highlighting this a little tiny. I'm talking like miniature. Movement. Right. Right. And I would, I would make sure this comes out. Yeah. That was my favorite. I saw all kinds of things back there. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Mask eyes. Yeah. It's really interesting. And this so you know mm. I, I kind of see this as as like a buddha shape mm -hmm. uh, this is like a a mask or um i saw like i can see a tiki guy in there tiki guy yes is in there <laughs> yes 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 and then how about centering it so i think i think off kilter is is working okay. because the whole thing is a little off kilter, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I see this as a bird. I don't know if it is or not, but it I is. See. It's a chicken. So I see that all of these like bizarre symbols together here. And, you know, chickens have are have such a role in um, uh, that strange religion. Mm -hmm. uh, Rosa. Voodoo. Voodoo. Voodoo and Voodoo. yes, you're right. Yeah, um, and then you know, bringing in Buddha shape, and then I don't know. It's just it's a, it's a weird mixture of powerful symbols, right. symbols that are powerful in another culture. Maybe uh, just a a vignette, or maybe just a vignette, just the darkening yeah. on the left. But the the one advantage of that light on the left and having it sort of off center like this. First of all, it makes it uh, move. You have a feeling of movement. It's not static going from right, right to left. But the light on the left, while normally would be distracting, it's almost like going from light into darkness. It, it's just, it's metaphorical almost the same way these symbols are in the middle. It's like a freedom or light on the left, but you're in darkness in the middle. I, 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 I see what you're saying, but to me, the the most important thing is the visual distraction mm -hmm. right yeah because uh, it takes I you away from the rest yeah so um it has to be it has to be toned down at a minimum it has to be visually um perfect yep and then and then start to read things into it all right so this is um this requires a, a tremendous amount of patience <laughs> and um okay so i blocked that in uh-huh gonna come back with a brush that is light much smaller and oops it switched back okay oh there you go Mm -hmm. what yeah. does the 10 percent smoothing do 10 percent smoothing what do you mean uh, up on up on top next oh. to flow you know i don't know i have no idea i think it just softens the edges of your brush is that what it does uh, i'm thinking oh i just blew that yeah. and then i would do oh wait a minute let me take this back this is not good. We're going to redo that. 
then I would come in with um, just a little bit, a tiny bit of darkness there. You could also do this with um, what uh, the density of the brush. Yeah, right, the right. I, I'm with brush. you. Yeah. Sometimes I do that too. And then I would come in again and I would make it just a little bit brighter selectively. Oh, that's really made a difference in that guy in the back. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> yes, that is a guy back there. This went the wrong way. Um, okay. So this is where it gets pretty delicate because what you want to do is you want to define this character. Okay. I would darken this. Let's do it here. We're going to darken. And then fill it in and then come back with um, brush that is light and pretty small. And. Oh, I see it coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's subtle, you know, mm -hmm. all, all this stuff is really subtle. So that did a lot to bring that out, though. Yeah. Yeah, it, it you can see now there's I mean I would I could spend three hours on this and do it so subtly. Yeah. Um I think so, I'll work with it some more. I found it interesting, you know, because of the problems that I was having with uh color to shoot uh for black and white and yeah. work with black and white, which is something I don't normally do, but yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So yeah. is this a single shot? It's a single shot. The only thing that is, uh, it's a single shot with part of the photograph flipped and joined. Do you understand? Right? Uh, you know, you're looking up the path. Okay. Right. So you have a right and a left. So it was copied and then flipped to give that repeat pattern that the chicken is going down into that. Right. Yeah. So this is, this is reflection of this? Yes. yes. Okay, gotcha. Huh. Oh, yeah. I would keep playing with this and this and this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> boy. This is a pain. I mean, it's not terrible, but. Oh, let me try this. Let's see if this will work. Okay. Now. Uh, Oh, can you see? That was easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So it worked. Okay. Um, well, I, th I think this is really interesting. Um, I'm a little taken back by like how close this is to being centered uh almost okay. want to see it a little more to the edge uh yeah less almost balanced yeah i did crop this so it was really a rectangular okay uh, photograph um and then i thought maybe i didn't need that much but it might have looked better that way she was way off center in in the initial one and i cropped it yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking about cropping like this, which would, and now we can do that easily. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh! Isn't wow, that, that's yeah, impressive. We've got it down um, now. Isn't that impressive? Yes. Really? Yeah. Fast. I love this computer. Remember before I deal with all those spinning things and all that shit. Yeah, so for me, this is yeah. a little more dynamic. It right. doesn't give her quite as much space to go into. So it's it's sort of, you know, pulling the tension into her. 
and then I, I start to see the, the relationship here and here with her. So how did you do the sweep, but keep her fairly clear? Well, I'll be honest with you, Catherine, the, the woman who was standing there when I did the sweep became too blurred. Right. She, the figure was too blurred. And so this was another figure that I had. So I brought her in. Okay. Okay. And, and I blended her with the figure that was there. So Got that it. was enough of a figure there. It's not entirely the one I brought in. And it's not entirely the one that was standing there, but it's enough that I got rid of the blur and she's still blurred, but uh -huh. not, not as much. Right. Cause That's the other one, you know, once you do that, once you do that sweep, it kind of distorts, you mm -hmm. know. Right. I like that your sweep has, like variations to the line that it's not you know right completely vertical but there's a, a little back and forth movement in it mm -hmm. and i think that was really clever to put her over where the figure was yeah yeah and that was well done thank you very well done very well what's what's working about it is she really fits into the the mm -hmm. ground here mm-hmm yeah, well, when you, I like I said, I already had something there to go on. You know, it was yeah. not out of the clear blue. Now, this one, I, I kind of put in here for fun. <laughs> 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 this is a, the buck tooth tree. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> With the eyes in the buck teeth. <laughs> it is pretty buck toothed. <laughs> This is, I was. This is I so, really so it's like a skeleton of a nose here mm -hmm. with the eyes. Yeah, I thought it, it was funny. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So this has such a lovely quality of light to it. Mm -hmm. A little too much here. Okay, but I was wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah, and actually the light is coming this direction. Mm -hmm. So it's not making a whole lot of sense here. Well, it just hit the ground there. It just hit the ground there, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I would take it down. Um, you know, these are some pretty tones over here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you want to keep some brightness there close to the edge, so that's Always a you little crop in and, and and get rid of maybe. I'm not sure I would. Okay. You know the quality of light is so much of what this image is about, and the colors. One thing you might try is, um, taking a little contrast out of the light here, and mm -hmm. desat and desaturating a little bit. Okay. And when you desaturate, you probably get a little closer to this. Tone oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that would work better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I think your the camera movement is is working. It's tricky. You, you you it's a lot of work because you get fewer returns for clicks, you know what I mean? You take yeah. a lot that, that it doesn't come out so well. But I mean the more I do it, the more I know what what movement to make in a situation which I'm finding interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the more control you get over things like that the more you can do with it. So you're not relying on the camera movement to make an interesting picture. Mm -hmm. You're figuring out how the camera move, how you can work with the camera movement to exactly. make it yeah. you're even stronger. Yep. This, this is very haunting. I would desaturate and darken. Okay. And We've got time here, so I'm going to do it. Um, let's just darken a little bit overall. Just a little bit. Connie, I would just like to say that uh, I have something I'd like to talk about at some point. Okay. Or get your thoughts on. All right. And it brought this house out a little bit more. Um, so this is where we started and this is where we went. It has more depth mm. to it. Mm. Um, and I would start to play with that depth. 
Yeah, you can see the trees came out more. The trees, the roots, so that's what I think of them as. Yeah. In the ground. Right, right. And it really has feeling of subconscious. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. And then I came back into my garage. And... <laughs> Played with your legs. <laughs> you did something else with your legs. There's one more. Yeah, one more. Okay, yeah. here we, here we go. And actually, I, I, I set out to photograph the hydrangeas in the vase um, over to the right-hand side or left-hand side. These things? Yeah. Those are hydrangeas? They're mm -hmm. hydrangeas. I yes. can kind of see that. You see oh, them in a, in mm -hmm. a picture? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to go back and play with them some more. But I just happened. That, that's a mannequin's legs or not mine. So I just happened to have her legs there. <laughs> and I love them. I think this is really wonderful and, and so suggestive. Um, this doesn't quite have enough to it, but this gives us the opportunity for making up a story in our head and um, a real narrative. And there's so many different textures and yes. the tones are so subtle. Yes. Well, it almost looks like a dress from the hydrangea. Yeah. Like I, that's what I thought. Uh, it really is actually a, a, a long skirt. Sure, that's what it looks like. Yeah. But yeah, the color issue is very close in color to the, the, the material was very close in color to the hydrangeas. That's great. Well, I am so excited about your, you having a clear eye and... <laughs> Oh, and take, too. Taking next, us next month the, I'll have two clear here. eyes, so who knows what <laughs> what I'll come up with. Next time we meet, I'll have at least one done. Oh, good. good. Yeah. When do you have it done? Uh, July 6th. Okay. And then two weeks later, the other yeah. one. Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, let's... We did everybody, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, Catherine, did you want to talk about Yes. The, <clears throat> our camera club has special interest groups, and we have probably 10 or so. Uh, and one of them is, that's been meeting probably for four or five years is a fine arts photography group. And we've had a couple of shows, um, and we've done a presentation to the club, uh, but when we were meeting last week, uh, the discussion came up and last month as well, what is fine art photography? And so in the course of the discussion, we, uh, decided to have a program for the club that we would invite members to share their work, which they consider fine art photography, as opposed to wildlife or street photography or another category. And then we'd offer uh, an opportunity for them to get feedback. We wouldn't score them, but we'd ask for some of the judges who might be interested in this particular format to uh, offer people feedback on their work. And so as Brooke and Suzanne and I were talking about this on Thursday, we decided that it would be very interesting to get your take, Connie, on what is fine art photography. And I sit here with my pen in hand to, uh, to take it. So we can tell the master. <laughs> Okay, give me a second here. Okay. Um, because I have I have given a lot of thought to this. Um, are you seeing my screen? Just no. You. Yeah, just us. Same screen. The gallery. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I, I sit on a foundation that describes itself as um, supporting the arts and culture in Baltimore. And 
we have been trying to define culture for quite a while. Um, and I came up with an interesting sort of definition that I'm going to bring to the discussion. Uh, so this is what it says about art. Art is intended to be a form of appreciation of beauty and expression of emotional power. Culture serves as a guideline for behavior, dress, language, and demeanor, demeanor, which serves as a template for expectations. But so the the idea of art here is um, expression of uh, emotional power, um, um, let me, let me, art definition. That resonates with me, expression of emotional power. Now, would that encompass the uh, lion eating, grabbing some animal and eating it? Um, here's something else. Um, this is Jeanette Winterson, um, who's a British writer about our age. Um, she said, art is a realization of complex emotion. And I think that is a hmm. wonderful because it's it's a it's a visual language, not a verbal language, even though we try to make it fit into a verbal language, it it kind of perverts it when we do. Mm -hmm. um, and she she finishes that with complex emotion is pivoted around the forbidden. Mm. Which I think is also hmm. really interesting. It's, um, you know, one of the things if we, um, if we make images that that don't um, affect us in some way, um, there uh, we're just we're we're remaining static, you know, the status quo come static. Um, and it, but if we make images that have um, an edge to them that are disturbing, some of what I think are my most beautiful images have been called over and over disturbing. But I kind of take that as a compliment because disturbing is shaking us out of our ordinariness and getting us to see something in a new way. Uh, and I think that's one of the, the, powers of art. Um, I also think that art um, connects us, uh, art that goes deep um, connects us to our own humanity. And uh, through that connection creates compassion and empathy and all of the things that our world needs right now more than anything. We need to be able to understand each other, empathize rather than stand back and judge. Mm -hmm. I think art can do that. Um, I agree. Did you get all that, Catherine? It creates compassion and... No, I, I have a little bit written down. I thought it was, yeah. You got it on, on the recording. And oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, but let's so, talk about that a little bit, you know. Yeah, okay. that a little bit. So if we were to look at the images we looked at today, um, clearly Diane's uh, and Suzanne's uh were evocative of uh and created emotional responses yes uh, yeah go ahead keep going um i'm not sure minded except um hmm. So I think that um, a couple of yours did, and 
um, the one that came over like a caress or a protection. Right, right. And okay. I think that, um, you know, you can't really talk about art without talking about beauty. And uh, and I, I think that a true definition of beauty is one that Francis Bacon, the philosopher, came up with. He said, there's no such perfect beauty that hath not some strangeness to it. Uh -huh. And by that, he means that for something to be perfectly beautiful, there has to be something strange, something odd, something that jars us, something that wakes us up for a moment. And so beauty isn't something that is predefined like we do in our world of, you know, a beautiful woman, a, you right. know, beautiful this, beautiful that. You know, it's kind of predefined, but but it goes against what he's saying mm -hmm. is that for something to be beautiful, there has to be an edge to it. Well, an it's edge disturbing. that gives a contrast. <laughs> an edge that disturbs a little bit, an edge that takes you off guard, an, an edge that that um, is something you haven't experienced before, a strangeness to it. I think that's the important piece. I agree. I think that's really interesting. Mm. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I, I think that is really interesting. And when you think about some of the things that you consider really beautiful, um, I would sort of run that exercise through your head, you know? Yeah. Beautiful and interesting, because there are some things that are beautiful that aren't that interesting. I think for, I think if something's truly beautiful, it's going to be engaging. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to be teaching a class through Nord Photography that's similar to this class, but it's, um, and it's by invitation only. And it's, um, and I'm not asking you guys, I'm not advertising it because you've got this here. But um, I, it's, so the, the idea of the class is to define your own voice, mm -hmm. uh, to um, define, develop. So it's very, you know, unique to you. And which is what we do in this. Really, look at the differences in our work. I yeah. mean, it's just amazing, really. But one of the first um, things that I, I'm not going to give assignments except for the first class. And we're going to meet over a long period of time, once a month for several months, and then individually, periodically. Um, but the first assignment that I'm going to give to them is to give some thought, put together a, a keynote as to who your influences are. Oh. Ah. So why that reaction, Suzanne? Oh, I think that there's just so many. Oh, gosh. Yeah. What and happened people... if I just said you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cheating. <laughs> um, but it could be it could be music, it could be literature, it could be wow. a, a person in your life, it could be artwork. Mm. And um, and I did it for myself. I gave this assignment to um, undergraduates at MICA years ago, and I did it for myself. And, uh, and I thought it was just so, what an interesting exercise to do. So I'm going to put that out there. If you guys... Mm. But, but I, the, the influences are different now than they would have been 20 years ago. I mean, some of them are the same, but. But in, but that's interesting that the an influence that influenced you 20 years ago may still be influencing you now. Mm -hmm. It may oh, still yeah. be part I mean, of that journey. Yeah. They're just more. More, right. The older we get, the, the more influences we have. Yeah, they build up. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> So one of the surprising influences for me was Superman. Oh, explain that, can you? Well, Superman has a very cut body. And he's really, you know, his costume is like flesh. And it's all about his body. 
And when I look at Superman in relationship to the work that I'm doing, I can clearly see the relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do see that. Yeah. You know, and for our era, um, um, Walt Disney had a tremendous influence on all of us, Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Hmm. So interesting stuff to think about. It is. Huh. All right. So let's go back to to art. Did have we given you enough? Well, you've uh given me criteria. Criterion uh, that includes uh, an emotion, evokes an emotional response, uh, has par- has an element of beauty uh, that has some edge to it, uh, that creates its own reaction. Um, and that's been really helpful. Uh, what else did we say? I think a key word that you used was expression uh, because to express something can be different than pointing your, t- taking your camera and taking a picture of a sunset, even though the sunset may be expressive. But I think if you're, the one who is expressing then I think that's an important element for fine art. I, I think that's extremely important for the maker of fine for art. The maker of fine art, yeah. Yes. That's more process oriented, yeah. but an extremely important point. I think the other thing we brought up was expression of complex emotion. Yeah. And and that's important because trying to translate a visual language into a verbal language, which is what we do all the time. We try to make sense of it this way instead of letting ourselves engage with it. Yeah, that's going to be helpful. Good. Thank you. And it, it's per- the discussion has given some interesting clarity to the work we do here as well. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. And it may make me not be quite as self-conscious about continuing to work with flowers. I see them just as the objects that I'm working with. Right, right, right. Yeah. And um, the deeper you go, the the more they become about you than the flower or yeah. humanity. Yeah. Than the than the flower. The flower is is a device to get you there. It's like Edward Weston's green pepper. Yes. Right. So it's not about a green pepper at all, but it's about a Henry Moore sculpture. It's about mother and child. It's about tenderness. It's about bodies. You know, it, it's so much more than a green pepper, but that's the device that he used right. to make those expressions. Exactly. When, when I was trying to get my rhythm again and I was out shooting in the garden, that one of the things I didn't mention was I was trying to approach it like I would approach the portraiture of when I was mm-hmm. shooting the models and the women and, and using the edges to make it more, not just a straight flower shot. Right. Um, and it was interesting because I found that brought more emotion out in me to do it that way and, and connect it that way. Right. Right. It wasn't really successful as a picture, but it felt like a certain path of right. expression. Right. right. And one that you have explored with, with human beings with that human you're beings. translating to, yeah, an inanimate. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I think anything you explore in depth, that deep exploration can be applied to many different subjects. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't think you're ever wasting your time when you are photographing the same thing over and over and over again. Actually, that was one of the, the things that I emphasized in, um, in the last class was repetition, the, the, the idea of um, revisiting the same subject over and over and over again gives you um, access to the details and nuances you can't see when you initially visit something. So the deeper you go into it, the more you have an understanding of the details and um, and your your senses and observation um, just continue to grow and to sharpen. Uh, and the deeper you go, the more you you, uh, you are accessing deeper parts of yourself, which then translates to your humanity, which translates to connection to the world. To, to other people. That makes sense. Hmm. Catherine, one thing I was thinking about is um, if you if you took um, photographs that you've taken of flowers from uh, three years ago, two and a half years ago, two years ago, um, an early Sears, uh, and what you're doing now, um, I think you would see that you're not doing the same thing. You're not repeating the same thing. It's not flowers over and over again. It's really your art has evolved using flowers. Thank you, Diane. That's true. That's a that's yeah. A... It's true. Mm -hmm. Very true. I think it'd be wonderful for you to actually do that, Catherine. Go back through. Well, it's in, uh, I had an exhibit 12 or 13 years ago uh, of flowers. And, um, and there are ways in which they are similar uh, and ways in which my images now are more intentional. Um, uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I will do that. Thank you for the suggestion. And I have looked at some of my early Sears flowers and I thought, hmm, they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just gone, you've just gone to a much richer place. You know, your exploration has gone so deep. Hmm. Thank you, folks. Your taste has evolved. <laughs> Your fine art has evolved. Yes. And maybe my skill. Yes. Maybe. So it one okay. last thing in your discussion of fine art photography. Yeah. I'd get rid of photography. It's fine art. Yeah. Ah. Yay. There's no difference between fine art photography and fine art painting, fine art music. That's a good point. Yeah. Just Very get rid point. of the photography. Excellent. Good point. Well, we'll keep you informed as Please to do. the progress of this um, happening. Please do. Um, are you going to explain, I guess, because I, I'm thinking about this, we don't have to talk about it, but you talked about your categories, um, your interest groups. Yeah. But I thought that street photography can be fine art and it can yes. be not. And even wildlife, I've seen wildlife that I go, oh, that's elephants, aren't they exciting and beautiful? But I've seen fine art of wildlife or what I would consider fine art of wildlife too. So I get, I always thought that fine art could be applied to any Okay. subject or that you could if you're in interest groups that any interest group could any member in that could create fine art as opposed to what most people would say oh yeah that's street photography right I think it depends upon the intention of the photographer I think yeah. if I can jump in here I think it has more to do with how you photograph than the subject I think the subject is if the if it's fine art 
it transcends the subject. The subject is a vehicle to express something else. So it's, it's not finding an interesting subject or finding an interesting moment. It's fi it's the, um, it's the seeing, which also can be of the moment, um, it, but it's seeing in a way that transcends what it is. Going back to pe the pepper or mm -hmm. those sunflowers, you know, they're not about sunflowers at all, but they're about so much more light, anxiety, energy, you know, so much. So it's, yeah. it's not the subject. This, this, thank you, um, Diane, for bringing that up because it just popped into my head. It's not the subject. It's not what you photograph, but it's, it's how you're seeing it. And, and I was going to add that, that, that cause it's, it's a good point, Diane, because I keep talking about how, or mentioning about how some of the photographers, you know, take excellent photos of birds, but they're Audubon shots. Right. You know, they're just, there's the bird on the tree. Right. And, um, and, and they're beautiful, but there's the bird on the tree. And then you take a, a photographer like Christy Odom, who does wildlife work, who didn't start out as a wildlife photographer, but she brings a layer of emotion to it that is highly unusual that you don't see in a lot of these wildlife photographers who are really taking the Audubon shots. So in a way that's transcending that gorilla or that animal. She's got a fascinating picture of just the outstretched hand of a gorilla and that's in focus and then it fades out of focus, but the emotion and the power generated by that shot of looking at the hand is like one of our portraits of a model or something that's, you know, one of, one of Suzanne's out of the, the garage. I mean, very different shot of wildlife and nature. Like uh, David Dusherman does the same thing with yeah. his wildlife and his travel photography. There's all, it's, it's so evocative. Uh, so yeah, very helpful clarification. Yeah. Thank you. And Maybe Brooke said it best when we had this conversation the other day. We said, what is fine art? And she says, well, I don't know what it is, but I know it when I see it. <laughs> and I said, it is true. <laughs> know it when I see it. So what are we meet? When are we meeting next? Let's find out. It, can we can we do it on the, the 23rd of July? Um, or because I'm tied up on the 16th. That's when we go away to the Rocky Wall Deep Haven camp. One minute. I think that works for me. I think it works for me. I could do it on the 15th, but um, the 15th would work or the 23rd. That week I'm out of pocket. How about the 23rd? I think that'll work. I will be more time. three days out of surgery. So Suzanne, what do you think? Can I do it? Yeah, I think you can. All right, let's do it. Okay, great. Yeah. Sure and if you can't, just let us know, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. Because then we can go to the next but, yeah, by the third day, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be all right. Okay. But can we do the sixteenth and then you don't have to worry about it? Sixteenth. I'm out of pocket the sixteenth, because that's when I'm at Rocky oh, okay. David okay. Camp. Okay. I could do it the fifteenth, but I can't do it the sixteenth. Fifteenth would work. Would you be more comfortable with that, Connie? Um, I think so, because I'll have yeah. done my first eye. I'll be in between the eyes. So oh, okay. Think maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, when's your first eye? The first eye is the sixth. Oh, so you'll have a week. You'll be fine on the fifteenth. So even though I just have one eye done, you think? Yeah, I mean, you're you're going to be able to see the images, and yeah, I I think you'll be fine. And again, if if you feel like you're not, then just let us know. We're all, you know. Okay, fine. I is can the critique. 15th the second Saturday or the third Saturday? I'm sorry, what do you, what, the 15th. Saturday. The 15th is the third Saturday in July. Okay, okay. I'm, uh, I have a standing meeting at 8.30. I could probably be here by 10. Shall we make it 10.30? Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, that's sure. fine. Okay. All right. See you then. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, Good session question. today. I enjoyed everybody's photos and comments. And, uh, yeah. And the yeah. discussion was really helpful. Thank yeah. you. Very interesting. As always. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.